April 29, 1975, the last United States helicopter departed from the rooftops of Saigon, a village in South Vietnam, signaling the failed efforts of 16 years worth of war. 16 years of folded American flags being sent home to mothers, 16 years of boys paying the ultimate sacrifice for their country and a cause that they did not necessarily believe in. The Vietnam War often resembles the current war that our nation is fighting, the war in Iraq. As our nation prepares to elect a new president this voting season to lead the United States, it is vital to question the candidates on their perspective of the current war. Today, I'm going to inform you of the plans for Iraq of Democratic nominee Barack Obama and Republican nominee John McCain. Having an understanding of the different plans will grant you the ability to vote this fall with knowledge of your candidate's position and what it is you are actually voting for. Over the past few weeks, I have thoroughly researched this topic through a number of scholarly articles, many of which were written by the candidates themselves, and live debates on television to find accurate and sufficient information about each candidate and their plan for the war in Iraq. The first topic I'll cover today is Barack Obama and his plan, his stance on Iraq. And second, I will follow with the opposing viewpoint of Senator John McCain. Barack Obama proposes a plan for Iraq that focuses on ending the war. His plan includes the redeployment of troops that are currently in Iraq, which Obama says would be, quote, a responsible phased withdrawal, end quote. By this plan, Brigades would be removed from Iraq at a pace of about one to two per month. At this pace, the majority of all U.S. troops currently on the ground in Iraq would be redeployed by the fall of 2010. A small task force of U.S. troops would remain on the ground in Iraq, and their purpose would be trifold. <coughs> Obama says that their purposes would include, first, to train and support the Iraqi troops, second, to counter terrorist attacks, and third, to protect American diplomats and personnel serving in Iraq. Senator Obama believes that this plan is the best course of action because of the steady withdrawal of American troops will pressure Iraq's government to work hard towards achieving political stability, and it will also pressure Iraq's military and police to be responsible for their own security. In his article in the New York Times, Obama outlines the status of the Iraqi army according to American Lieutenant General James Dubik. Dubik, who is in charge of operations and training Iraqi security forces, estimates that the Iraqis will be able to take over all security efforts within 2009. While this is an estimate, Obama does emphasize the potential for withdrawal in the very near future, so long as the Iraqi security forces are ready to take over the responsibility of security. Obama makes a point on his website in saying that, quote, the Bush administration's blank check approach to this has failed to press Iraq's leaders to take responsibility. Basically, Obama's plan is to slowly remove the responsibility from the shoulders of the Americans and give it back to the rightful owners of the Iraqi military and government. Understanding Obama's plan for Iraq is a start, but on the other side stands John McCain, who holds an entirely different stance on the war. John McCain wishes to continue the plan that has already been set in place by the Bush administration. In 2007, the reevaluation of the war in Iraq and its status led the Bush administration to initiate a new counterinsurgency method of warfare. More troops, money, resources are required for this tactic. But as McCain claims on his website, the new approach has helped to produce a 90% decrease in violence within the past year in Iraq. McCain's reasoning behind following the tactics of his predecessors is based on a few things. He believes it is both morally and strategically vital for the United States to oversee the full re rebuilding of Iraq. Until the Iraqi government is stable, enough to protect its own people, the United States must support it with troops and finances. Failing to allow the Iraqi government and military enough time to fully prepare for this responsibility could lead to a vaster, costlier war. 
McCain finishes by saying that Iraqi forces, once Iraqi forces can protect their own country, American troops can come home. In conclusion, both candidates have very different views on the war in Iraq and how it should be managed. You have heard the plans of Barack Obama and Senator John McCain, each claiming to pursue different ends in Iraq. I hope that this information will help all of you to vote with a better understanding for these candidates and what they wish to do once they reach office. I wish to leave you with one final thought. I want you all to think of where you were in 2002. Many of us were probably in junior high school or just beginning high school. It was then, six years ago, this fall, that the United States of America entered the country of Iraq. For six years, images of war have flooded our TVs, newspapers, our talk radio shows. For six years, we have wondered how will this war end? When will it end? This voting season, we must ask ourselves who will bring this nation to the best conclusion in Iraq.